Most people who use an illicit drug do not go on to develop addiction. Our study defines, helps us to understand how an early exposure to something like alcohol can actually tip the balance and increase a person's vulnerability to developing addiction. The gateway drug hypothesis uh, is based on the observation that when kids get involved in drugs, they follow a certain developmental sequence in which they use certain drugs prior to their use of other drugs. And the issue is what mechanism accounts for the fact that the use of one drug increases the risk of using another drug. You can't really find the answer in human populations. And when you turn to animal models, you have much better control about the various components. You can do experiments in rats and in mice that you can't possibly do in human beings. You can go to their brain, you can see which areas of the brain are involved. You can manipulate areas of the brain. These are things you can't possibly do in humans. What we did is we allowed the animals voluntary access to the two drugs, nicotine and cocaine. And the animal presses a lever to get cocaine and he gets alcohol in his cage for two hours a day. And we used two, group, two different groups. One group gets alcohol before starting cocaine. The other group just gets a water bottle for two hours a day before starting cocaine. And what we found uh, is that the animals in the alcohol priming group, they had enhanced behavioral responses. Not just, uh, we looked not only at how much cocaine they use, but also will they continue to use the drug even if you have a negative consequence, like a foot shock. What was so surprising to me was the uh, rats behaved exactly like you would predict from Denise's work on the gateway hypothesis. Denise had found, studying people, uh, that they use nicotine and alcohol before they use cocaine. After that, we asked, okay, what's happening on the molecular level? And we found that alcohol is causing degradation of uh, histone deacetylase, which acts as a molecular brake pad inside the reward circuitry of the brain. That finding that 10 days of exposure would drive down uh, the HDACs, it doesn't occur after just two days. So basically, there has to be a learning process. The drug has to be consumed over multiple sessions for the process to actually kick in. The short-term one doesn't stimulate the brain mechanism sufficiently to prime the brain. Uh, so you, you need to give a, a more persistent uh, dosage in order to get the effect. When we looked further to understand the biology, the idea that it would be similar to a drug in a different class, I mean, th that was very surprising to me, uh, and to see the similar process. Uh, so this study both paralleled uh, and extended uh, some of the previous work that was done uh, with uh, Eric Denise and uh, Amir Levine in the past. Now that we have a better understanding of how it's being degraded, uh, gives us really an opportunity uh, both to study other drugs, to see if other gateway drugs share that mechanism, but it also gives us a handle, a way to start intervening and actually thinking about other molecular types of interventions. If you know what are some, what are some of the risk factors uh, for using cocaine, you can target your intervention prevention programs at some of the risk factors. And alcohol nicotine takes place much before cocaine use, takes place generally in adolescents early adulthood. So I think it really focuses you on the fact that you have to uh, look at these earlier developmental stages.